Okay, everybody, so we're back. I'm gonna try something a little different when it comes to... our clears for power levels. I wanna see how it feels kinda of doing a similar scenario to something I would do in episode four. Like Marco's colors, nice. But some things never change. Like, I definitely think Force early on would be fast enough to just basically insta-kill everything. But we were suddenly- we are hitting some troubles with very hard mode. So I think it's worth kind of experimenting on stream a little bit. Just to kind of see, like, what the difference, you know, if you have a high-level character potentially carrying. Where it doesn't really super matter whether or not you have hyper max accuracy on CCC. It only matters that you could use Hell Needle and stuff like that. I'm curious for the enemies where we fight, like, the Indie Belras, for example, you know, whether or not those characters would benefit from a force on those enemies that are somewhat annoying to kill. So we have <clears throat> at least one player with materials, and we have a high-level player, aka the 178 Mr. Freeze, spamming Gafoe currently, uh, to see if that speeds up the run any. So for the most part, they can kind of wait around. They don't necessarily need to have the right heavenly arms per se in order to wield some of the bs destroying items but i think from the standpoint of like at least normal i would assume that i could probably carry all the way through to like the first mary, mary carol or whatever and i think from the standpoint of safety it does reduce the odds of just being one shot by del saber which did waste some time in like those awkward levels in very hard mode but I'm also kind of curious for clear ability. Oh, I didn't realize this never recovered your TP in between. That sucks. I so rarely do it with force. I don't really pay attention to that. Well, good thing we have tri-fluids, because I'm definitely going to need them now. But anyway, beginning I expect to go pretty quick, because I'm essentially a quote-unquote hell needle user, because I'm killing things essentially in one hit. The only thing where we might have some trouble is that there's a wall in this quest that requires a Cannon Rouge, as pointed out by Hellcleave in the prior run. So we might need somebody to have Cannon Rouge. Yeah, Rizond also works. I'm just doing Gafoe stacks, so that way they just die instantly. Like, just no, no contemplation they are dead. At higher levels, we're going to switch over to Rizon. Fire Traps also work. That's good to know. I forget if it was on the left or right side. It might be the left. I'll use a couple dive fluids here. Yeah, these enemies will basically spawn dead. There is almost nothing they could do except the GG to them. So early on, I expect this to go pretty fast. Yeah, like we have like three plus minutes saved. So, you know, good pace. Like, these guys can try to do whatever they want. Sadly, though, forces will fall off as we get closer to very hard mode very heavily in episode 2. To the point that it feels like I'm fighting what should have been ultimate level resistances for no reason. Only spared by the fact that they have lower HP. Yeah, like, see how this enemy takes a little bit of time? Like, the fact that I'm not instantly killing them is kind of insane to me. But I'm kind of curious from this standpoint. Like, I can help a little bit with damage, and obviously, you know, as they get stronger, Shifted will make it more powerful, of course. So things like this we normally would have reset. But because of Gafoe, seems able to kind of focus fire here. See how they have, like, near... Re like, they have 75 resisted normal. This is so dumb. We should probably reset soon. Just because I, I already can't do anything. So sad. At least we have some team doing some damage. 
These Sinnohs in between, I think, are fine. I can kill those kind of instantly. Or these other enemies that are a problem. Also, there's just, like, the biggest wall of star animizers on the floor. Probably just pick them up. There you go. I'm getting my value in the quest. I mean, I guess if you just brute force it, you could do this. At least the team seems, like, decently strong. So I could kind of make up for some time loss in the other area by just doing this. By Delta. Not getting a turn. What's a good ID for Fomar? I feel like any is fine between TTF and RT. Um... <clears throat> I do think she is uh, pretty strong. <clears throat> Excuse me. Options to deal with bosses. So I would leave. I would lean slightly toward Telfu's favor. She also does really well in quests that have like low end evasion. So I would not like enjoy taking her into like seabed, for example. But I, I think she did fine for like some temple clears. I think uh, her ability to use Rambling May saves a lot of time on falls compared to some of the other forces. Oh yeah, we're quitting out in 20. Yeah, I would just warn though that like she's not good at desert. I just want to be very clear. If you're doing it for pink desert, you are going to be vastly, vastly disappointed. She she is not a good character to take into episode 4. She is the weakest of the forces when it comes to that. She wants to be using her ATP and she does not do enough damage to justify playing Desert, I don't think. It's like the Phone Newman's world. She does okay at, like, CCA ping. Like, if that's where you wanted to use her. She does okay. But... I feel like... If you were just looking to strictly use Hell, there's better options. I could kill it off screen if I really want to. Yeah, we're just showing off a little bit of the quest. Technically, going forward, we should just stop at Gai Gui, but it's normal mode. I don't know how much it matters. Razan should clear most of this up. Oh, I got hit by insta kill. Rip. Uh, unfortunately, because I'm standing on the switch, I can't really see anything. So I'm kind of dependent on the team to hit some of the further ones. We could do this, though. An Epsilon? Oh yeah, team is dead. It's just going to teleport randomly. I think team is dead here. Got a reverser, I guess. I forgot it had that really stupid gimmick. But hey, at least we get to learn something again. <laughs> Yeah, let, let's just quit out. I don't feel like killing this. I'll be real with you, chat. It's not worth our time. I was having fun up until Epsilon. Epsilon just kind of ruins things. If it didn't teleport, I would bother doing that. It's just a waste of time. I only don't have Rocket Seal, Fomor, or Fomoral. Um. Yeah, Fomoral, I feel. She's kind of in a weird place. I don't know what would be considered her best area. Like, she does do bosses decently well. She has, like, options to hit, like, flying enemies. <clears throat> I think she's probably the better boss rush force for episode two. Yeah, Rocket Seal Pink is pretty good. I'm looking forward to using mine. I just restocked on the other things. About melee phone new world. I was gonna say that that's technically episode one vault up. She equips the red saber and everything. That's what melee is, right? She, she's not technically using a wand. Right. Need everybody to come to the counter, please.
Yeah, you gotta re-roll some of those reds. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, we, we were talking about that before. It's okay to have, like, some overlap, but... I think you're looking for other hunts. Oh, bought moons, that's fair. I think you just left them as default and never monsec them, yeah. So yeah, it seems at least for now the team is strong enough to clear up until seabed. Seabed might be worth clearing out. But some of the assumption is, like, I'm still able to kill Del Depths. There's going to come a point where I don't kill the Del Depth anymore. Then it's not worth it. So we could afford to experiment and push a little bit. I definitely think for normal, I think it was fine to clear Seabed. Because at least that's worth more experience. Trying to keep an eye on their level. They're level 18 currently. For the most part, nothing interesting drops on normal difficulty. Honestly, episode 2 normal is just total trash. I'm going to be real with you. I think I even wrote that in my uh, one of my guides. I literally was just like, don't bother. <laughs> really? I think I wrote something very literally along those lines there. There's just absolutely nothing of rare interest that drops. You don't even get like good ad slots or anything. It's like actually horrendous. Yeah. So we'll see if I end up switching up spells a little bit in order to deal with the enemy. As we get to higher areas. I guess that's kind of an open question. I'm still not sure where I would prefer the, the Bow Moral. Like, I do like her in parts of Episode 2. But I don't prefer her for the hunts that she can do better than the other forces, if that makes sense. Like, I would just still rather play Ranger every time or Hugh Cast. Yeah, I definitely would not recommend Episode 4, though. She is not good there at all. Even with, like, Magical Peace, Ignition Cloak, before we merge, she feels super underwhelming. Okay, somebody's hit level 20. That's good. Right, somebody's making this one. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's up to you, group. Walk all over them, please. There we go. So full moral might be something I revisit in the section IDs. Honestly, even oh, okay. Lobby. Okay, next difficulty. That's pretty quick. And again, it's gonna get easier and easier. The big the big level for them is 41 for Rangers. And so they're gonna be able to use Ranger Wall. I think she's decent at like a support role. Like if I'm just doing debuffs and healing, you know, I, I think she's fine. I still think I prefer the Huna role for that. She does okay solo. Like if I'm doing, I, I guess I would pick an ID that would technically be strong in Temple because that's probably where I had the most fun with her. Where I'm able to land like a lot of Rambling May shots and or a combination of, uh, Hell. She has a little better accuracy than Fomar. But her slicer animation means that she could kind of cheese almost every encounter, especially with 13. Sadly, she doesn't have the raw ATP to one shot some of the other enemies without super obnoxiously sphered gear. Here's our first giant. Yes, 
these these enemies will take a little bit of chip damage. I think of interest is spawn. I'll hold still, regen some TP. There we go, TP saving. So I imagine for the most part it should be a breeze. There's gonna be a few enemies that stop dying to Bike of Bowie on hard mode, but like the majority of them still will. Like, we can see the Indie Bellrose there, just exploding. Jaya dropped nothing of interest. I tried picking up the item, I got baited. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about Fomar and Aran though. You were being real. I view him more. I don't. I don't. Mm, I don't know. Like I agree that you need an Aran ID. I don't know if I'd make that Fomar to be honest. The reason being is he should probably be Episode One. I don't really view Aran just like a great Episode One ID. Like, you could do mines, but you don't have, like, TTF, for example. But, like, if you, if you want to do mines with him, it's fine. But I, I think his strength is that he he needs, like, the easiest of areas to play in. And he can also do okay at episode 4. Like, I guess it just depends there. If you don't want to do the episode 1 side of things, I think he's fine, I guess. Just trying to think of something that would take advantage of all of his strengths. I think he could still do it, don't get me wrong. Especially as you get, like, more hit percentage. It's just that it will lean you more towards Episode 1 mines than full runs, unless you join other people. Which I guess, to be fair, you tend to. Because I view Phone Newman as almost purely Episode 4. This is where I start stopping no insta kill for me. So we're starting to see some enemies I'm not able to instantly murder. He's playing slow, should die instantly, more or less. How easy it is to kill the miracle. You know what? I'll melee it to death. I got nothing better to do. I mostly just want to see how easy or tough Seabed is. But the Jaya drop. No interesting stats though. Some of these enemies are just absolutely exploding. It looks like we got some good damage. Stun lock you at a distance. Care of the annoying geese for the team. Again, I'm like a, a quasi hell user in this run. Debuff them just to kill them a little quicker. 
Another Jaya no hit though, sadly. Alright, so here's where I'm curious. So we're ending at around 109 in this area. And then I want to compare one more time once we clear again how quick we were going. I'm just going to do what I was doing before. We'll pop it out. Welcome back, Chris. Yeah, like, I think for New World, it's actually surprisingly good solo in Episode 1. I feel it's just unfortunate that, like, her main strength is just completely negated in multiplayer. Because she actually kind of hard bullies, uh, Arkbringers in solo play. Like, I actually have a lot of fun of, as using her as, like, a legitimate force. Rather than, like, ATP or whatever. But sadly, they get like insane ice resist, like almost 90 is their weakness, which is really stupid. I don't know why they did that, other than to annoy force players. So the XP per second is about the same. And again, these enemies are mostly exploding, so I would say by very hard mode, it's probably not worth coming here. Based off of observation here. I'm at least able to stack so much Gifoe still that these enemies are not really a problem. Nice, I got my char fluid back. I'll humor it and kill a couple things here, and then I'm leaving. Yeah, these guys are too slow. Uh, humor time over. Lobby time. Kill goal is not worth that on hard mode. Bombs up, hope you're doing well. See, I think the team is scaling up pretty well. Again, anything where I could potentially speed it up with Gafoe, we'll try. That'll help with some of the straggler lilies, because sometimes when you're in the corner, it's, it's kind of annoying to kill them. But they got still save time there, even in very hard mode. Needing to reposition because Lily's in the corner and you're also in the corner is kind of annoying. And right now, like, the Delros are getting deleted instantly, and those are the ones that don't normally slow down the hell run. So it's good that there's a kind of alternative coverage. Yeah, at this point, they should be able to use all of their hell equipment pretty safely to be able to sub in heavenly battles and stuff like that. Which does make a big difference. Clear speed. enemies. Yeah, it's like roughly on par. We were like 114 when we exited Seabed. We, we, we go up briefly here, but then it falls due to the maw. Yeah, see that? So now it's falling to about Seabed level, sadly. Level up Codium with hit. I think that's that useful. So it seems like if we have enough ATP, it is actually worth clearing them, but like that's that's a big conditional. I would say for people without materials, we should do the reset we did before. Gotta make up the top, the XP loss there. I with no hit, that's sad.
for enemies. Yeah, definitely small advantages of this quest over the other quests. Uh, if you're doing Beyond the Horizon, you're not getting any items. The blue ID items are actually just bonkers. So, I'm kind of curious. If we feel like it's slow on very hard mode, it might be worth just switching over to Episode 4. Because I think Hell is still useful there. It's just... It, it'll be... If you don't have, like, specifically a needle or a shot, it probably wouldn't feel as good. But that's where, like, ATP will matter more. Because that'll be, like, you're gonna be the Astar Killer, or you're gonna be the Dorfon Slayer. There's still things that you could do. Like, ATP. And as long as you have Shifta, it's not too bad. Poor enemy is just getting exploded. Yeah, the less time we have to reset in Lobby is also good. If it's only off by like 1 or 2 XP a second, like right now we're at 134, which is pretty high. We have to kind of weigh that against how many resets we need. Because I feel like it was actually keeping pace with Temple, it's just that there's so many more enemies here. Now that we're post-moth nest or whatever. This character's able to deal with the trash. I'm just kind of sweeping him up. A clean sweep, as it were. Out of here, Gibbles. I like that the release don't instantly kill you. Lowering that will help. He's going down a little bit. It's more of these last couple of waves where it gets kind of rough. about 121. So there is like a big spike in the prior area. So you can see like potential for reset. Now that we've cleared it faster, is this worth it? Find out. Cause like these die really quickly due to go away. Like we make up some XP here. Maybe they're just not worth as much as I think they are. I mean, he can confuse me all he wants, so I'm just gonna be spamming Gapoe. Like, checkmate, Morphos, I don't care what you want. Get out of here. They'll beat her ni nearly instantly then. Yeah, we're, we're basically getting back up there. We want to aim at around like 124-ish XP. Second when we end. I think waves like this help. Oh, 
roughly worth it so far. Buy all the Delveters. That should be a nice juicy wave of XP. Yeah, so we went back up to 126. That's, that's pretty good. That was on par with Temple. I'll download material. I miss it. Okay, slash lobby. This area is not worth it at all. Tower sucks. And we're about 31 minutes into the recording and we're level 36. <clears throat> so that tells me that we're we're making pace. <laughs> we'll we'll do it on the instead of the in-game time. We're gonna look at the recording time. And I can definitely feel like the team strength picking up big time. So the ATP is more useful here with the force. Yeah, so now now we're actually oh we got our first rare enemy. Good. And that's the other thing too. Rare enemies have a higher resist of dark by like quite a bit. Like if you look, like some enemies have like 20, 25, maybe even 30 on like normal. Uh but you'll see like the rare Mill Lily is like 45, and like some of the rare rappies are like 48, for example. Yeah, I, I killed it instantly. So those kinds of things would potentially waste the group's time if they don't have like B502. Some of these things are legit just dying to Gafoe instantly. On my screen, they're not even moving. They just get hit by Gafoe and die. Grass Assassin lived for like a fraction of a second. I think it got held. The Belrose died due to damage though. Yeah, we're making good pace here. Don't even load the bottle sometimes. They're dead on my screen. Just, just believe. The sadly board eyes have dropped. I should probably pick up this cash. With the doubling of cash from this area, it's actually kind of worth it. It's like almost normal ultimate level to cash at the moment. Gen a little more DP. Double Laconium. Eh, I'm good. Gaia no hit. That's sad. Yeah, like, chat will kill mostly the yellow enemies. The lilies I kill instantly, so that saves a lot of time. Where's the bronze badge? Oh, no. No, I got baited. There were so many reds. I wasn't sure which was which. The bronze badge. So sad. There were so many, chat. Because I'm in this mode, I don't see the mini-map. So sad. Too many rares. I picked wrong. Yeah, we're about 33 minutes in the recording and somebody's almost 40. But right now, this is actually really fast. Yeah, I know at least it can't be anything good. We don't get silvers, I think, until very hard mode. enemies are just legit exploding. So possibly when I come in here, I might have to switch to uh, Razans on very hard mode. We'll see how much it actually matters. I can't say I've paid attention to the resistances in very hard in a long time. Like, preferably, I'd like to get Bowie Sack to kill the wolves, for example, to save time. Like, that's something that's just relevant always. Like, see how they just die there? That's something you could do in normal forests. And arms seem to get exploded too. Yeah, I think in some ways, like, it's nice that the force has alternate means of leveling people. I guess we're showing how broken blue ID force is. <laughs> Spoilers chat, it might be really good. <laughs> it's, it's undecided if it's the best idea or not. Wink. Oh, Fo Newman, what can't you do?
The team has almost gotten there. Remember, in-game time also doesn't really care when you're, like, we're teleporting in and out of lobby. So real-life time will always be more strict than the in-game time. So the fact that we're at 36 minutes and people are almost at 40, and I'm killing a large majority of the enemies is kind of silly. I was gonna say, if I liked Cave more, I, I did actually enjoy Purple Caves, it's just I don't enjoy hunting Psycho 1, sadly. Their ability to bully uh, everything in single player is really, really fun. That's where I think Fomar would also potentially still do well. Because they have lower HP than Episode 4. Oh, oh, you mean in that regard. Yeah, that's fair. Somewhere you hit level 40 at 36 minutes. Where's the lore going? Not a freeze on for the group. There we go, I'm whipping out the gun. I've had enough. see the point in resetting the run. The team is so close to leveling. We know Temple has that awkward level spot anyway. We're just keeping an eye on the time. Even with going with unconventional further clear of CCA, we're still making time. one level up at this point. Heard a rare drop, I got excited. I was like, oh, is it a giant? Alright, lobby time. Farewell room. Any stacked vice to... S uh... I mean, there's the uh, Terrell's Ego, is it hard or very hard? Purple? Unless you just mean for power leveling, then I can't help you there. Because there is like the Oops All Vices run in Forest. I think I made a comment about that in my guide. If not, I'll go re-add that. Both power leveling and unlocking items. Yeah, I don't know if th I don't think there's anything exciting on normal mode for them, sadly. But I guess if you just want to do a million vice runs with uh trying to get hilled at four. <laughs> Let me open it up. Let me see what difficulty that was. Was it very hard? Roll up real quick. In hard mode. Yeah, this the silly Hilda Bears with the vices. I mean, one in forty-five drop chance is uh, kind of silly. Then you could get Musashi. Nice. 
Look at that remote battery already 41. We're going on 41 minutes in real time. Keep in mind that's with downtime with us kind of between quests. Yeah, so I'm seeing the slowness of the kills a little bit with the force. I still see the powers of stacking. Stacking is still helping a lot. There's some enemies that will get slowed slightly, like Belra. Not too bad. Grass Assassin should die in like two good ways. Unfortunately, they look immune to stacking. They they take 574. If they could die to stacking, they would have died. Uh, there's the silver badge. I'm gonna have to look for it when the moth nest comes down. I think it's directly in front of me. Yeah, I wish the Grass Assassins could be damage stacked on. That would have been so huge. Elros, though, they get murdered. Uh, literally everything in the dressing room. You can resize them, rename them. You can just become a new person anytime you want. button, damn. Yeah, see, they're already mostly wounded. So if we ATP killed the Belras, that solves one of the problems we had before, because in very hard mode, they have more than 70 EDK. Like, it's actually really annoying to kill them with health. But as long as I chip them out like that, I think that's actually not too bad. That solves one of the problem enemies. Well, I'm still able to kind of annihilate everything. Oh, I'm seeing a big difference with fire resist here. Damn, I have to actually resolve. That does no damage. Hmm. Might still be worth using good Bowie. The stacking of the wolf saves time. Hitting the Delta saber with stacks saves some time. It also stops them from hitting the players instantly. Because, like, what were the problem enemies when we did CCC earlier? Del Saber would be in a state where it was untargetable. Indy Belra was just annoyingly unkillable. I don't think chat really cares about the robots. So if I, if I can't kill the robots, I guess that's okay. And then I might just kill the dub switch instantly because my fireball is lingering. Yeah, like, see, I instantly kill the wolves and that saves time. Maybe this is still faster to do with one force. Maybe an optimal setup would be like three rock casts, one force. Or, or rock a seal, of course. We are at the Peruti song. Dino no hit, it's so sad. It's going pretty fast, so we're at 44 minutes in real time, and it's 44 minutes for the character. So this is still it's somewhat equaling out at the moment, but we also pushed our run further than we're supposed to. I'm kind of liking this. I like that for the most part we're not like randomly dying outside of like going further than we should. So I do think that D-band actually makes a big difference as well. Because we saw, like, Del Saber was, like, legit insta-killing people. Now I can chip out Sorcerers, which is also huge. Those were another annoying thing to deal with. So if I'm able to kill Sorcerer, or at least chip him out enough that ATP kills, I'll consider that a win.
Yeah, I still think the I think it's still better to go Bowie stack there. I think that actually saves a lot of time. We ended at 187-ish. We'll remember that for next time. So we'll probably go up to uh Mary Carol and then reset. Unless we could kill this like ultra fast. No, it feels a little slow. I guess we could also see how fast Seabed is. Actually got the freeze, nice. I just want to see if we can recover the XP difference, then we'll learn for next time. I want to learn in real time, not be told it. We got to test it. We're, we were above 180 before. Welcome, Dracula. I'm curious what the difference will be if we go to Seabed now. Is it even doable? I have a feeling the answer is no. But let's find out. No assumption. There we go, we liberated his damage. I feel like we'll probably push past this closer to 65 or 70. I just think we just need a little more base damage, which will just come with level. Also, that guy unarming me, super rude. Ooh, wow, they're at 85 fire resist and very hard. That's brutal. Is there anything in here I can go Bowie stack in? Okay, at least take damage. Sort of. Okay, I killed Del Death at least. Man, why did he have such high fire resist? Come on, game. Can you just let horses have any fun? At least more foes dies to damage. Leaf says YCC is something in O2 does get great mans if I strap in CCA. Uh I I don't know. I still don't think that's worth it. It it would need to at least I wouldn't view it as worth it for a disco great man drop. White is such strong strong hunts elsewhere. Maybe if we're talking like solo leveling. It doesn't have the same appeal. Like some of these ones are like so good that I would contemplate doing them at high level just because they have good drops. Like the things in blue ID, very hard mode. I don't think it rises to that level. Yeah, I think we're just too low statted for the party to survive this. Yeah, well. We 100% need to leave it Mary Carol next time. I don't think the team has enough stats. This isn't taking too long.
idea because where we start losing a lot of XP because if people are getting one shot like this it's not good enough yeah we, we need to leave pretty much immediately I am lobbying there's too many deaths we'll come back later yeah because they're, if they're not even getting XP then it's super not worth it move forward Eight, like a bazillion moons for me. I still think the right call is to just get Bowie stack. I chip out enough at the enemies that it's always worth it, and hell will cover everything else. Like, I don't think it would be strong, like in episode 4, to do like a 2 force stack. Where episode 4 just gets stronger the more forces you add into the equation. But I feel like one force does what it needs to do. It slows down enemies, it stops Del Saper from instantly killing the party. So if you did like a, a triple rock a seal one force, maybe that's ideal. Like it's still doable with pass, but we saw like downsides. If you get hit, you get knocked down and you just kind of explode. Where like if a force just stands in the center here, what are they going to do? Yeah, there we go. Dark Bellroad died almost instantly. These Lilies will explode almost instantly. These Rappies will explode almost instantly. There's less need to have Hell Needle as well. Kind of nice. Uh, let's see a power material. I should probably take it. The four moths are just going to explode. We're about 53 minutes in. So as, as per expectations, it always slows down a little bit as we get to like 60. Granted, we lost some time in seabed, so that was kind of a whatever. But they're going to be averaging about a level a room. Oh, see, now, now we're pushing a good XP per second. Because we were not getting that before. If you remember, I was saying like we were getting somewhere between like 200 and 190. We're, we were pushing a 218 there. So I definitely feel like the XP per second has improved. And we're still not like the quote-unquote optimal leveling team. Which, to be fair, if you're leveling multiple characters, you need to be able to do something other than just play Rock Seal all your life. So it's good that, you know, it doesn't have to be the perfect team. You can kind of compensate for Hell Needle or not. Once they get a bit more levels, I'm kind of curious how they would do in episode 4. They also have ATP. But it's something I don't want to rush early. It's better to get them the, the easy levels now. Photon drop right at my feet. Yeah. which is nice. Yeah, me chipping out the Sorcerer here is huge. That that was a big time loss in the other one. So I wonder if we did the other one, if, if one force recast would have actually been faster. Maybe it is faster than episode 4? I mean, as long as one of them's power leveling. I think that might be true. But if you have more forces, I feel like the opposite is true. Just from observation, because, you know, I'm not seeing people get really crit killed. You know, we're not losing time, like, shooting the stupid sorcerer over and over with no success. But they're, they're getting chipped out enough. They're not really able to cast spells. You know, they're not, like, instantly, instantly dying. But at the same... Well, that one did instantly die. But for the most part, they're just ineffective. 
and that is a big improvement over the other run where they were like actual showstoppers. A 35 hit Angry Fist? Why? I'm gonna be laying on hands apparently. Didn't know it was a paladin. So we're hard. I am I'm just leaving him once I see the Mary Carol. I don't think it's worth. Even the Sinnohs I don't kill instantly. I feel like my effectiveness falls off pretty hard here. Like I could slow them down a little bit with Kapoe. Not great. Well, I want the bronze badge though. Flash. This will be our kind of opportunity to compare, because I feel like their clear speed is mostly stable. I don't think like 20 levels will make a big difference unless we tried pushing past the uh, Gaigwees and stuff like that. Because that's where, you know, potentially having 100 more ATP per character would matter. But for the most part, like I'm just seeing kind of insta-kills. So this portion of the run is basically the same. I guess when it comes to the raw cast, it helps to get more accuracy. They'll, they'll scale a bit longer than the Rocket Seal does. Instead of the Rocket Seal being basically done at 70, he'll be done closer to 80. I guess in some regards, we're removing Jank from the run. Delro, though, just getting actually murdered. Bonk. ID, good ID for broadcast. Um, I'm kind of leaning no. I mean, the, what what do I think about when I do? I was just assaulted with tortillas for Promethean. I think from the standpoint of purple ID, I think raw moral. Because like, if I'm gonna be doing uh, episode four, they have good pod runs. If you want to do or take advantage of some of their clears in other areas, I don't usually think rock cows. I kind of view rock cows as he's pretty good with just like the episode 2 boss rush IDs. Like he's pretty safe on like Viridian, Yellow. I don't know if I want to say orange or pink for him in particular. I'd probably lean towards one of those. Because I do- I really think yellow ID is super stupid on yellow boss in particular, with broadcast. I think so far he's my favorite ID, so I have a bias. The fact that you do endless episode 1 and 2 and can do RT and can do episode 4 is so dumb. <laughs> yeah, Viridian- Viridian allows you to do LNK hunting. So I think he's pretty good at it in multiplayer, so like it'll be easy for you to host games with him. You get your own stun lock guaranteed. You just need people with buffs. Arguably you'd probably save Viridian episode one more for uh, Hunter, because I do think Hunter is stronger at TTF than Ranger is. If you're who cast that is. But in terms of being able to do episode 2, mm, you're going to bazooka everything with him. Ooh, left material drop. I should go pick that up. 
Yeah, like, see, he teleported, but then he instantly died. I'll tell my bad. Three buffs. I was reading chat. I wasn't looking at buffs. There we go. Put people out of kill range. I will take that silver badge. Yeah, I want to kind of compare. So we're ending at, like, 205-ish XP. And that was with me messing around. We saw it was closer to 210. When I, when I was not, like, hunting for items. So when, I'm, when I am hunting for items, there's definitely a DPS loss, which, it makes sense. I just wasn't even attacking for a while. We can still make up for it a bit here. Yeah, I'm kind of curious with the same team here, how we would do. The only thing I don't remember offhand is what is the minimum HP to survive very hard mode dwarf on? I usually just go 400-something. Play it pretty safe. Yeah, it's four on one might be correct. I was trying to think to yesterday when I was getting hit by stuff. I know it was you definitely needed more than four hundred, but I don't remember by how much. Goodbye, Marilla. I like how it's just like people have like 96 health. I don't know where these numbers come from. Alright, humor me with the run. I want to have a comparison in the video. So it looks like so far this is just from observation. This would be faster than our other run because we're getting more XP per second and we're only going to get faster as we go on. I just want to see compared to some episode 4 runs, which we would potentially do once you're not like level 40 so we have like a, a couple levels we got some safety levels i'm curious against a couple of quests how we feel about it i want to compare it to the two simple quests first let's compare a b then beyond the horizons because i think we still need like a little more extra health if we want to do Beyond the Horizons. I view that as kind of like the finisher, where I like doing the last 10 or so levels. I think I talked about that last time on stream. But Beyond the Horizon requires like a pretty high HP to survive. Massive Attack B doesn't. You just, if you don't have enough HP, you just don't go near the door ones. There's at least somewhere you could go. <laughs> you're, you're caged in with them. Versus they're caged in with you. At least a lot of these enemies are still hellable. For people that have a mix of stats, this might be slightly stronger. And see, most of these guys I could just chip out, which will help. I'm curious about, like, these first few rooms in particular. We're already... We were around 130-ish. the quest that you would normally do is like a more casual pace. I think we're doing fine at it at the moment. And we're seeing some 60s and 70s. This would be a little rough with only hell. It's not like the team can't do it. I think it's a good comparison point. Let's spam some Gafoe here. And we'll probably go back to CCC afterwards. These are like slightly more annoying to kill Indie Bell Rose. Poor Rappies though, they're about to get deleted. The murder squad is here.
At least now we have like a comparison point. Like CCC is faster than Massive Attack V. It's about on par with Beyond the Horizon. The more forces you have, the better Massive Attack V is. The more Rangers you have, the hell, the better CCC is. So at least we're seeing like they're mostly equivalent. I think it's an interesting comparison to do on stream. Oh, that's right. I could just lightning the sky real quick. Even with characters that are not like quote unquote inherently built, deal with the episode four. It's still going fine. That's kind of like, I think there's more value to be had in Massive Attack B for sure compared to CCC. CCC has the bigger payday potential. Like getting a hit Jaya is just like, even just rolling one with like 60 hit would just be like game changing. I'm surprised that Dwarf hit me, that's unfortunate. I must have been in the wrong spawn spot. curious about CCC solo for sure how much of a difference that makes is if the 200% XP if we could get it below two hours that'd be crazy or if it's like two hours in one minute I'll, I'll say it's like close enough kind of thing yeah they'll mostly handle the Astarks with ATP so this is not too different from them killing like a Mary Carol's Chip out the door fawns. We don't need to worry about them. Sadly, no uh, ignition cloak chance yet. Once they get closer to 70, we'll try Beyond the Horizon. I don't want to do it too early. We saw, we saw yesterday what happens if you try to push it. It's just, unless somebody has, unless everybody has like 500 health, it's just going to result in deaths. So that, that'll be our safety number if we do it again. We actually pushed ourselves a bit to see what worked, what didn't work. And this kind of room will help catch up a lot of uh, XP. Crystal, nice. Yeah, I think they have like just enough stats that they're not like instantly killed by anything other than Dwarfon. But it's kind of like the weapons needed are just a little different. There's definitely like a preference for like Charge Arm, for example. It's fine. Characters inventory. There we go. I'm just kind of clean it up nicely here.
I was gonna say, don't worry, I brought bringers. <laughs> I thought I thought about that one one part of my plan in the future. Like, okay, so that way we don't waste like 20 years fighting that thing. I want that. I'm gonna sacrifice the hit angry fist because of this terrible stats other one. So we know. No point to using magical points in this room. Go for fast cast. Jack getting pretty good at landing the hells there. Did he seriously rotate out of Bowie? That sucked. That actually sucked. Unfortunate. I think it just kind of helps to have like a visual comparison because we always talk about these quests but like now we can put numbers next to them like it's about 30 xp per second to 35 xp per second less with the similar party for people that are because i do feel like it is very meta that most people would probably try to raise like you cast or whatever if you raw cast and those are the meta characters you're more likely than not to see them Around level 70, we'll, we'll come back. I just want to make sure everybody has at least 400 HP. And then also a lot of ATP. What are we talking? There we go. Somebody else's demon is as well. That's gross. Like, wait a minute. Poor Dirty Bula. It had a chance. It was a very brief, brief moment where it could have possibly done something. And it got noped out of existence. Respect the halfway line. Everybody fall back from the halfway line so the zoos can dive on. See about where I'm standing. I need you to not really go past me here. And make sure they dive on. In fact, I'm gonna back up slightly. There we go. As long as we respect the halfway line, they should just dive bomb and die into it. Get some point. Oh, and then you can. Then collectively, you can bully everything on the other half. And if I need to, I'll just grants. Well, that's who's actually trolling. There we go.
Goron Detonator helping me out. Thanks, Goron Detonator. <clears throat> Interesting. So overall, a full clear of the quest is about 50 XP per second less. Trade off. Much better overall items. It's like you you could see like pros and cons for that at least. I'm gonna hand it in at least for tickets. There's at least potentially guaranteed rewards. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the things that are back here. Go back to CC soon. Like a Jaya drop for me, I guess. We're not as likely to come across them. Yeah, getting 10,000 Meseta a clear also kind of matters for newer players that might not have any money. Anyway, back to CCC. Almost did that on ultimate. That would have been awkward. I was about to say, probably within the next minute was about what I was about to, going to say. Somebody should probably hit 60. Lo and behold. characters to play as. The fact that they don't even have to look at the lilies at all during that is a big time save. They're just like, yeah, they're already there. Pick up some cash. I do like it's a high level force to get to do this forever. Or Del Saver, like actually stun law. Sorcerer just melted there almost instantly. Out. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, there's a blown shield. Goodbye, 
me. These guys so bad. I don't know. Game hates us. It could be amazing. There's just not to be. Surprisingly, I haven't seen a single dry drop so far this round. There's like eight enemies that I think granite between spaceship and temple. There's four in temple minimum. It's like, man. Oh, there's a giant. Be complaining that it'll appear. Yeah, they're they're mostly low world garbage. Meanwhile, I'm getting like 30 hit uh, angry fists and nonsense like that. See, this is why you have to put items on the wall of shame. Calvation for bamming the spam. Purge them, Calvation. Yeah, so funny enough, I guess the other thing that we compared against was, uh... The very beginning of Massive Attack B was on almost on par with the lower points of CCC. All you did was reset up until the satellite lizards. That early XP is stupid. So if you're wondering why phone and power levels. Oh, you know what we should do, actually, as a comparison. But it'll require people having HP. I don't want to do it like right now. That that's for a high level thing. I'm kinda curious about new mop up operation three. That's gonna require the team to have ATP if they don't have ATP. I wouldn't even bother. If team doesn't have materials, there's no point to doing it. Go a little further. These are stats seem to be fine for this. Kill the geese. You can kill the guy queen. Damage is starting to catch up on me. If I didn't get knocked down, the Gibbons would have died. Dead. I do like the unreduced demon on very hard mode. It does make the cast very silly. I almost forget about it sometimes, and I'm like, yeah, it's so good. Remember those days when you could do what you want as a cast? If I even play as a human character in lower difficulties? Anyway, time to lobby. I'm gonna pick up some money first. Since 774 Masetta is actually good. Yeah, this is worth it. Not worth it. Seabed is still too slow. There's stuff in between them. 
You got mats on this character. Oh, that's good to know. So potentially, we'll try it. It's definitely one of those things you don't do at super low level, so I would wait until... I would probably be more willing to do Beyond the Horizon. Yeah, I just... I, I don't... Based off the XP, I, I don't think it's worth going best like we still. It's it's just slow. No, I, I don't even... Like, you're saying that, it, it was not worth clearing to that point either. I don't... Um, it was not even remotely close. We were getting, like, 30... Oh, Jaya would hit, but it's terrible. I'm not picking it up. It's more like... We had, like, 210 plus XP a second, and then we were, like, barely 170. It was... Even if we got up to, like, hypothetically 20 more XP, it still wouldn't be worth it, sadly. The elites are just too annoying, sadly. I think we would have to have... In order to make it worth it, I think two people with demon mech guns. That would be probably what I would recommend. So that way we can kill them quickly. Like, we have some demon, but it's still not fast enough to make it worthwhile. Because that's how much time we lose on that fight. Unfortunately. If somebody really wants a 15 hit Jaya, I will pick it up. Otherwise, I'm just gonna leave it on the floor forever. Go get... Cheerio. Uh, 15 after attack. Yeah, it's not going to tech the 25, if that's what the question is. It, it rolled min-hit, sadly. There we go, nice clear. Murphy's almost the level I would consider another quest. Almost. Yeah, we, we got a decent amount of them. Is it the before? It's just kind of like playing the odds. Like you, if we play this like five or six more times, somebody will probably get something with it. I guess I guess this is my dis my own interpretation of the CCC meta. I do think Force so far has been looking really good. Uh, Hulk leaves just saying yeah. I mean exactly. There there's so many Jaya chances. Like even though we did like one quest that was not CCC, ultimately it's still like we'll, we'll probably see it before the end. It's more likely than not like. I think between us, it's realistic to say that we would see a total of 100. Between all, not not per person, but 100 total. So, you know, the odds of getting a couple hit are pretty high at that point, even if it's only 2%. Just unfortunately, a lot of them are junk. So we're, we're very likely to see like five or six all zero Jaya's, for example. Also, did that seriously unequip again? Damn, that was a waste of TP. Now we're pulling back up above 200 XP a second. This is where I want to be with the quests. So, 100% agree, the force adds that XP that I thought we were going to get with the prior group. This, this this makes me a bit happier, so it's more like just a team, team comp issue. But like, one force did make a really big difference there. I'm going to clear up to the Mary Carol. When Murphy hits about 400 HP, I'm going to try something. Gotta get a good comparison in. Plus any extra ATP just helps anyway. Lobby time. Yeah, 
that way we're ending at like 200 plus XP a second versus like 178 or like barely 190. I would say on hard mode it was worth it. I don't think it was worth it on very hard mode. It's just, he bet it's just too slow. This song sounds very familiar. Are there remixes to the song? song is called real quick, sorry. <laughs> You'll pay market rate, oh no. Uh, it's not super important. Let's, let's do one more of these. The Murphy should just naturally hit it. And technically he put himself at 401 just now. But it was more, I just want to make sure the ATP is there as well. I think eventually I'll give up my Ranger Walls. <laughs> I don't need that many since most of them are uh, 180 now. Another Photon Draw. I did eventually. There it is. I keep getting disarmed. This is so annoying. I'm getting clipped when I go in the middle of the other room, but it, it actually is throwing me off. Because I'm like getting hit while I'm just getting ready to slash lobby, like the wave before that. Makes me so sad. I've already hit Jaya. Um. I guess I'll pick this one up. Leave this on the floor for people that want that one. So, speaking of uh, hit giants. So if anybody wants a 30 hit Jaya, total after attack, it has some ABs. So if, if if nobody literally has one and they think it'd be useful, it's it's good enough to use, I think, on Yuka Seal. materials for you cast. Fortunately I think I have a bazillion. But by the time I actually want to level them it should be basically GG. Though to be honest, I feel like at least two of the Hucasts will level purely through cookie quests at some point. That'll be a future endeavor. I think it's 15 ABs, 30 hit after attack. Is I, I view it as if it takes like 25 or 26 runs, on average we're mostly seeing at least one Jaya a run. So the odds of seeing hit percentage should be pretty high for the group. Just due to the sheer volume. Jaya has been attained, assuming it rolled decent. Or it was a mistake. What if the above? Didn't mean to pick it up. Two times five hits. Yeah, see the five hits are coming out now. The shame it's low rolling. Yeah, this wave in particular, I think goes so much faster with force. Wow, chat. I played for so long, I actually leveled in very hard mode. Slow clap. 
character something else. The secret is the wine, obviously, it's true. Bronze badge, I probably want that. There we go, chat. Yeah, I would say definitely during the anniversary quest, or potentially like a Christmas quest. I could see coming back to CCC in the future. It's not bad. I just kind of view this as an extended Jaya hunt. At least there's something I would go for here. I swear, if the robot punches me again and removes my weapon, I'm gonna be so sad. Please don't. This time I did not lose it. Yeah, somebody's complaining yesterday. Their XP counter broke. Zero to next level. Just leveling too much. Game can't handle it. Alright, slash lobby time. Let's do a quick comparison. We're about 210 with the current team. We have a silly amount of badges. Materials are okay. If you have ATP that you want to grab, by all means, I'm going to put this away in the share bank for other players. I don't know if that is better or not than the thing my Huka Seal is using. 30% hit. Not sure. Other Club of Laconium is good. I think most of my forces actually don't have one. I should be using that more often, to be honest. PDs. Oh, I've only gotten two. Did not get very many. Yeah, we got a little bit of safety HP. We got good damage. I'm just curious. Most importantly, their accuracy has been steadily climbing as well, because I know Hugh Cast takes a little bit, or, well, Hugh Cast, yes, but also Rock Now. Uh, let's try this. Do a little beyond the horizon. I'm just curious. pretty consistently. Slow down some enemies with this. They hit me, it doesn't really matter. Check our XP at the end of the wave. Poor Rappi. Poor lizards. Poor lizards. Mostly just them bullying the Buddhas. Which, with enough hell, they could probably just force it through, to be honest. Actually, just getting deleted in real time. There we go. The 
bullets flying. Goodbye, Astar. Didn't push backwards. Try to move back in the middle. Epibudo is tanking a million hits. Watching out. guys explode. Watch these guys explode. There we go. And a little bonus levels for people before the next area. And now, now we're going above 240 XP a second. This is the kind of XP I was hoping CCC would achieve. Hopefully we'll see that close in single player to get closer to 230 because that was some crazy experience. That'll make up for massive attack B earlier. We're just equalizing currently the experience. I'm gonna stand near the upper part of the room. The so people occasionally, if I see somebody get hit in there near me, I'm gonna try to rescue you. Otherwise, the stacking is real. As we saw, if you're in the middle of the room, you just end up getting dwarf on. We learned that the hard way yesterday. Start getting held to death. Just believe. You can hell anything if you believe. Out of here, Zabuda. Slow down the door, Fawn. Oh, did Murphy die? I think Murphy died. Murphy. Alright, let's let's lobby then, Murphy died. He's not gonna get experience. I saw his buff wore off, and I'm like, wait a minute. I missed his exact moment of death. Rip Murphy. Alright. So the XP was pretty strong, but there's the downside of the quest that it's hard to survive. I was hoping with the bonus XP that would um, help. Let's move forward. I'm gonna try one more quest. I don't think we'll full clear it. I just want to have like a little little sampling, then we'll go back to uh, CCC. So I think that quest does require 500 HP, even with raw cast. He's not tanky enough to survive. We're waiting on Murphy. There we go. Who cares about this one? to kind of limit test thing. Sometimes people talk about it in the Discord, but a lot of it is just kind of assumed knowledge. So I just want to kind of get to that point where we are truly testing ourselves in a way that makes sense. Should have gotten Rufoe. A mistake. I need to go back and get my Rufoe purge if we do this again. If. Otherwise we'll continue forward. Out of way, wizards. Goodbye. sure about. Some of the other rooms I think are more team. Uh, you might want to heal. Or go. But if you're too far from me, I can't help you. <laughs> That's the only rule of thumb. My rest of range is terrible. Do a little 
complimentary heal every now and then. Maybe at the start of every wave, I just top people off. But right now, it is competing with CCC, despite the difficulty of having a lot of casts, only one healer. Yeah, like right now, it's actually better than CCC. That's kind of silly. <laughs> right, chat? Like, see, this is why we gotta test it. Like, they have hell, and they're doing better here. Like, they're getting 217 plus experience. I mean, obviously, there's a big danger. So, you know, we, we put a little asterisk there. Oh, the team went north? Well, that's not good. You're so dead. Go south. Go, where's, where's the team? Uh, I will try to heal the team so they don't burn out. There we go. And the final room itself is actually pretty easy. The biggest issue is the babysitting, yeah. So, I mean, kind of as expected, episode 4 is usually the king of experience. It's interesting that Beyond the Horizon doesn't equal out as much, just due to the fact that it's pretty easy to die and get booted from the quest, which wastes a lot of time. I mean, it's expected to some extent, but like seeing it play out is very interesting. For this quest, you know, it's kind of fluctuating between the highs and lows as it can be. Even though the team is constantly dying, in a weird way, the quest is easier than Beyond the Horizon, just because of the fact that if you get booted, it's just over. So unfortunately, we did lose a lot of time. Not, the whole group did not move south collectively. Fortunately, it should be fairly straightforward here. So for people that want to refresh their traps, I guess technically you could do that, but generally when you're power leveling, you'll probably just get your free traps back. Plus side for the quest. Downside, these hallways are boring. If only there were teleports. Could you imagine if this quest was made more efficient, Hellcleave? If at every healing circle, it just warped you to, like, the next battle? <laughs> How broken the 6 speed would be? Like, if this whole 20 second stretch didn't exist, it just put us in this room. Team still hell on that monster. Can you imagine if, if that was like the custom request request? They're like, what if they just made this quest but it's even better? Just take the same layout and just warp all the way to the end. Just like whip just faster. Oh, I got a rebuff. Yeah, the beginning rooms seemed kind of worth it. It fell off a little bit. I'm hoping we get closer to 180, because I think we did lose about 25 XP per second, I was seeing. Maybe 30. Also, Rook soundtrack. Oh, I'm trying to mash rest of it. I think Bowie would never end. Yeah, we we're climbing back up there. Yeah, it's kind of like on the lower end of CCC now. Like, for a moment it went way above it. Now it's just kind of, it's evening out a little bit. Uh, sure, I'll put this on because of the soundtrack. I'm like close enough. See, so yeah, it is kind of annoying that YouTube like cracks down on whether or not you're listening to music, but then you listen to like a two hour video. It doesn't do anything. It's indeed Fantasy Star 4 soundtrack. So screw you, YouTube. That's <laughs> what I'm telling them. <laughs> Just like, what is that? Literally listened to like almost double the amount of music. It didn't do a stupid pause warning. 
Hopefully, because this one is the full soundtrack one, I will not get randomly interrupted. we're still getting dia chances so it's not like we've given up on it compared to the other quest that's also the, the the pro this quest is comparable to cc for the most part it has a definitely a higher score of entry than some of the other ones but at the same time it is worth it i think this is definitely easier with two forces for sure somebody's just on like babysitting duty make sure they don't just melt <laughs> Robots are overheating. They need more fans. We'll debuff the whole group. We'll try to top people off a little bit every now and then. Yeah, so the fact the experience is coming back up to 180 a second. He's dusting. True. Like I can, I could be a healing battery while still doing some damage at least. That makes it a little easier for them. Yeah, we're coming to like the tail end. Like we ended at around 200 experience a second in CCC for 183 with like a 15 second pause. So I think right now it would be mostly even. I don't think it would be as drastic as saying we'd be a 200, but it'd be more realistic to say we probably would have been like 188. We're coming up to one of the bigger XP rooms, so. Fortunately, less babysitting. Of course, I'm not being. Yeah, see, team, team's taking care of themselves with the Rappies. They don't care about these enemies. I'm gonna chip some of them out. There we go. Up everybody off. It stopped trying to recommend Dragon Ball Z to me. I think it finally learned. I wanted me to listen to those six hour calming soundtracks in Pokemon. Like, what part of anything I do would mean I want that? I don't understand. Nice. Seems already level 72. Not too far away. I probably dedicate about another 50 minutes to helping people power level. We're going on in almost two hours real time. We did some experimentation, so it's not a pure CCC run, but I do think overall this was faster in almost every single regard than the other comp. And then, you know, sometimes it's a comp issue. So they're a bit more on par. Kinda good. The plus side is that, unlike CCC and Beyond the Horizon, this quest you actually hand in and get money, which also matters if you're using a lot of mates. Sometimes that money does actually matter in the run. You're like, oh, I got so-and-so. I'm surprised I saw zero Jaya's, though. Or Jaya's, I guess. No photon crystals either. Rip. One day we'll get ignition cloak. Oh, I, 
gotta get my synthesizer or whatever. Give me a second. Oh, he won't even let me do it. Fine, I'll pick this up. Happy. Oh, he gives try grinders in the lower one. Hey, don't I have room for that? I guess I didn't hold them previously. Okay, back to CCC. That's all I wanted to see. I think that gave a good comparison. So with two Hellshot, one person with demons, CCC might come out on top more than I was expecting. But that episode four quest is very silly. So I think 4B is probably the easiest for people with no gear. CC is kind of like long, long time players only. And I would say probably new mop up up is new mop up is like for at least two forces. The other gear of the other characters doesn't matter as much. Yeah, there's less movement for sure. That's a pretty pretty accurate comparison. I think we got to see like the the pros and cons of them a little better today. We explored them a bit more. Because I wasn't like dead tired. <laughs> Just thinking a bit more. So it is what it is here, I suppose. I'm still looking at my XP to next level and shaking my head. I mean I don't think this character is ever gonna wear a red ring, unless I'm gonna be serious about meddling something. It does seem like at least in this quest people were getting, it sounded like a really high amount of PD. For me, I mean, I think in both runs I got like maybe three or four total. So I'm, I'm about on average with what I had before. I, I don't think I got eight. Goodbye every enemy. Probably just be shot for damage at that point. When they're at like 29, like I believe in you, chat, just shoot them. Don't even bother helling. Yeah, you can see like right now we ended at 185 in that room, so it's it was comparable with the new mop up. I think the bigger difference is new mop up. I, it's also hard to get people into it early unless everybody hard commits to HP materials. So maybe I'll do a discussion video talking about these and like one point and why people would do it. It could be interesting for teaching newer players. So I think we experimented enough to kind of understand how it works. There's probably some other tips and tricks and that'll come up as part of the discussions I suppose. But we're definitely seeing how Hellshot was a big game changer. Demon Mech Gun, as always, is a game changer. Or Gertabulu. Just passing the two hour mark. Yeah, you can see like this comp is like just a slightly, slightly more efficient. 
just by how much XP per second we're getting on the leave here. Goodbye, random enemies. Goodbye, Del Sabers. Four photon drops, apparently. Damn, not a single rare has dropped for me in this room. Brutal. Not even a bad rare, just legit nothing. Guess I'll pick up some money. I'm so worried they took my weapon again, I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, please don't. <laughs> Hate re-equipping it. the flow in this frame if I really want it. I guess I'll pick it up. Anyway, lobby time. Yeah, we're probably about six runs from hitting our first CD. Not too far. It doesn't drop anything interesting on very hard. something to do in the afternoon. I think I will be back probably before normal streaming time, so I might do some casual runs with people that are there, but I do want to do the solo leveling. I guess it depends on how tired I am. If I don't feel more awake in like four hours, I'm gonna just stream at normal time, I think. I have Monday off, but I probably still want that as my off day, to be honest. I don't really want to do more PSO. Unless uh, family plans fall through. There we go. I was trying to grab that power material. Lots of bronze badges. That I can confirm. I did get a lot of bronze badges in the other one. Though it kind of pays almost for its own ad slots. <laughs> I don't need like too many of them. I got like 15 or 16 last time. Best parts of power leveling, all the mats, badges, PDs, other stuff you get. Um, don't think that's actually all that true. I definitely get less materials on most of the runs that we do. 
I guess it just, I guess it depends on where you play an ultimate, if you get more or less in like very hard mode. Like I feel like just casually playing episode 4, for example, ultimate, I'm gonna go, I'm definitely gonna get more materials. I probably agree on badges, just because like there's so many raw enemies. But materials with the way the draw percentage work, I find that I, I, I'm maybe even if I'm in like... I'll put it this way, if I'm playing tower or like seabed, I will definitely get more materials here, for sure. Oh, through other means, yeah, that's fine. That makes sense. PDs... I, I don't know. I mean, like, I picked up three so far in the run, but like... In two hours of playing, wouldn't I have had about two PDs anyway? I don't feel like it's that substantially different. Why can I not pick this up? This is so sad. Uh... Okay, that's not what I'm looking for. Where's the silver badge? I got baited. <laughs> it wouldn't let me see the item and it was the wrong one. That was mean. Oh, co cookies would make sense. No, no, no. That I, that 10,000%. Cookies is like the time to power level people. If all you want to do is cookies, you just play on normal mode. You go on like CCC and you're like, this is my life now. Or I guess if you want some Jaya's, you do it on hard mode and solo. Yeah. Just because that isn't really affected by um, difficulty. So it just ends up being a lot of repetitive normal mode spam. That's usually when I tend to unlock stuff. But we, we didn't do very much unlocking last year. Which I guess I should probably mention in CCC actually. Probably do something in the section ID for that. True, it's all luck based, but someone that would be so leveling that isn't doing something hard leveling. I normally don't find anywhere near this much. Um. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm gonna go with question mark. I mean, like, so far I feel like my material gain has been out of control with Ultimate due to the increased drop rate. Playing through. I would say, like, CCC is good for collecting a bunch of items, particular, uh, cookies. Materials, it's pretty good. I would say compared to, like... If, if you were not doing episode 4, I think if you were doing, like, TTT, TTF resets or, like, RT for levels, and yeah, this is like easily triple the badges. Yeah. I was just trying to think of like what other people normally do in, in very hard because I do see people doing like the, you know, let's do DTF. I don't believe in that quest at all. Maybe we could try it just as a joke, I guess. I don't expect it to be anywhere near as good. But now that we have levels, let, let we could try to see how it goes. I just need to grab like an x or something. I guess team can technically sound lock revolt up or whatever. The big hang up I think for doing TTF is I just really don't like how Worm Boss operates. The needing to relearn very hard mode Worm, I'm not excited for, to be real with you. Ultimate, it's easy. You hold forward, end of wrath, match over. But anyway. Yeah, this XP is still not worth it. Even at, like, mid-70s, it's still taking too long. Unfortunate. Alright, well, I'm rolling this out ever again. I'm not going this far. Next run. I will humor you with some easy clears here, but that's it. The moment it's, like... Mini-bosses, it's over. Because I don't even do damage to the Rico boxes as a team, really. And enemies like this, I think, just waste a lot of time. So 
Let's just hide away. At least the Morphos mostly die in a timely fashion. After this, I think I'm done power leveling people. I'm, I'm good for the rest of the year, I think. Unless I seriously want to get another Hue cast. Then it'll be more like people are power leveling with me. Soundtrack that threw me off. I was like, what the heck is that? I'm not dealing with this. I mean, if you have a solid group doing CTF, it'd be better. It's whenever people plug it, having to wait five, ten minutes to fill group. I'm gonna say Rocket Seal Blue and Orange Phonuman. If you do anyway, you should do solo. Hmm. You know what? Now that has me curious. Alright, okay, we're gonna briefly do some TTF. Give me one second to set up for it. Need to go get a attack mag, I think. Right, so we're just gonna put on whatever. I have a power mag generic and oh, inventory full. Game please. We're gonna keep the other mag in our inventory. Probably just one pure power here. And I need to put away something else for funny bringers. Let's go ahead and bring in an Excal. I mean, this whole point is to... to we're, we're comparing stuff anyway, so I don't mind taking a little more time. I need to get 230... ATP. So if I do this, for example... Is that enough for Excal? It is. I guess I should still magical piece for the beginning half. Make sure my stuff is good to go. There we go. Uh, I'm kind of curious. I don't remember how Worm boss, boss works at all, so this will be interesting. I know it's not going to beach immediately. It's going to waste a lot of time. Is it wait to Riffoey or Gazond first? I think the faceplate is Fireball. Body might be Razong. Yeah, I think it's Gazong spam. 
Is that it's a different weakness compared to ultimate. In ultimate, it's fire. Pretty sure. I never use it, though. I mean, when it hops overhead, I'm going to be kapoing, I think, regardless. Dang, Rafoe spam. I am double checking what its stuff is. It's on here. It's the same. That's weird. Only lightning and uh, the other one. Okay. Interesting. Today we learn. Uh, I probably should have taken Rip away Merge. I don't think it super matters other than the other boss. I like that I could almost one shot. See, their Rafoe merge would have made a difference. I'm gonna have two shot. So sad. Technically, go back for it. Might as well as, actually. For here, anyway. They'll be fine. In theory, we could slime do. Love everybody. Poor dragon boss is actually getting wrecked. Ooh, what's the what's the visual cue for very hard mode proper positioning? That's actually funny. I can grant some from here. I'll assist long distance with it. Bonk. I'd say it's like over here. The arena seems smaller. Yeah. If it's just the visual of the walls or whatever. Dragon says Chris, something like that. <laughs> Random Jaya drop. Nice. They don't even drop Jaya. It's disappointing. this background music on mods. <laughs> I'll be over here, I guess, to telepipe, although I don't know if the team has telepipes. wanted to show him what's up. Not enough fire trap damage to kill. Yeah, that's so sad. Well, time to win with one button, I guess. Oh, 
I got baited. Just waste so much time. Anyway, fight's over. No, I'm gonna grant some as he goes under. But he gets for just circling around the raft. That was the 600 Vestetta. You know what? That's sadly on par with ultimate money right there due to the doubling of cash. issue with TTF is just like, will the team survive getting hit by falls spells? Normal mode, it doesn't matter. I don't have to worry about soul link damage or whatever. I brought three seals. Oh well. That's just like, when you have a million uh, units to hold on to. Speaking of which, let's switch over to... Yeah, that seems fair. Let's do a casual 1500 to Sinnoh. I'm like, listen. And Phonuman had enough. I'm assuming you still have to unlock him. I remember my backup strat was just spam Gafoey. Wait, that broke the... I was not expecting that. Why does that do so much damage? Ah, back to Kapoe spam. Yeah, I, I actually popped it using Gazan. I was not expecting that, to be honest with you. Oh, Volop. You're just not built like you are an ultimate. I'm gonna flood the screen with Kapoe. Usually works. Alright, so we're, <laughs> Gazond is actually too strong. Oh well, time to time to delete Volt up here. My me. But Phonuman's putting in serious work. Get out of here. So far, not really impressed with this XP per second. Like, I know we wasted like a couple seconds in the run, but like, it's not even like remotely close to CCC XP. Like even Massive Attack B was more so far by like a lot. <laughs> in theory, we could RT, but I feel like that would just be really boring. <laughs> If TTF isn't on par, RT is not on par. I'm not gonna test that. If this, if we end at like 180, I would understand, but there is no way. Balls is worth that much to make up for this. Mr. Free is putting on like serious, serious stuff. I think it's the first time I've ever used Excel on him. Just never bother normally. It should just be good Bowie spam. I mean, basically, everything should just die if it like dares glance in the general direction of Bowie spam. I don't even care what its resists are. It's dead. Yeah. 
Oh, look at the little damage that does. That's so cute. I have, like, enhanced iframes, so it doesn't even matter. Actually brutal. Like, normally in ultimate, it'd be like, pop, 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 and then you're done. Like a Bowie? Yeah. We're good. One game. Go to the next phase. There we go. I'm gonna have to run forward a little bit. Sadly, I don't have my Glide Divine on. Oh, where it just barely moves at all? Okay. GG. Just, yeah, I was. All his faults been real slow, and then, you know, decided to park. GG. I'm gonna run forward to Zalor, which will cost a little bit of damage. That's fun. Still pretty quick. The, uh, I I'm expecting this to end somewhere around 130 XP a second. If we're lucky, it'll be like 150. Yeah, definitely, definitely not as strong as the other quest. I can see we're like an all max team. If we don't have like hell, I can see why people do it. Yeah, it's like 130. That was like severely under the CCC. A lot of money at the end though. Anyway. I'm gonna go put these items away and we'll just finish up with a couple CCC runs. Technique back on for more damage. I like that he's 43% of the way to hitting 180. This character lives in very hard mode chat. Like he sometimes sees sees the sky of ultimate when he's doing RT. I think he's done like three runs of that, maybe four total. But do you still get escaped all for us, right? Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, we're within probably two runs of somebody hitting 180 or 80, I mean. Don't worry, chat. I just want you to know, remember how I said I dislike the calming music Castlevania collection? The other calming music Castlevania collection is still on my recommends. Relaxing and atmospheric Castlevania music compilation with 712,000 views. Shake him ahead. algorithm swing and a miss I can say love this track too it's on the spaceship background music in PSO episode 2 nice 
See, now it's trying to recommend me more Fantasy Star stuff. It's slowly learning. And then for some reason, Tomb Raider 3? That I don't really understand. I, I think it's just very confused what I would listen to, to be honest. Like, wait, he's playing NES, PS1 soundtracks. What's happening? What do I recommend? You would think due to my uploads, it would recommend a lot of Fantasy Star, but funny enough, it actually never does. I guess because I just don't go out of my way to search it. It doesn't enter the algorithm. The closest we have is when I put on the Fantasy Star soundtrack for some of our uh, guides. Otherwise, I, I don't watch other content for PSO. Goodbye, these enemies. <laughs> so here's what we learned. Cookie Quest is still ridiculously untouchable. enemies. Don't need to care about them. Somebody's already 79. A bit higher than I expected. Very likely we'll hit the end of the run. So we're almost at 2 hours 40 minutes real time. The other the other uh, attempts were about like 2 hours 45-ish real time. But like 2.20 in-game. So we're definitely going to finish before the other videos at this rate. Even though we did TTF and messed around, right? Like it's still going to be faster. And a massive attack B. So it shows that even though we hard dedicated to the CCC and we hard dedicated to episode 4, CCC with the forest has beaten it by, I would say, easily 10 minutes real time. So yeah, it makes a big difference. And again, it was kind of those things I was talking about at the other, other end of the video. There's like certain problem enemies that like all hell comp just cannot deal with. Like, Del Saber randomly slapping somebody loses like a million seconds. Indie Belra randomly not dying wastes a ton of time. Dark Sorcerer refusing to die wastes a lot of time. And my character can stack and stunlock Del Saber. I kill Indie Belra. And then if they need to do ATP to finish, it's now an option with materials. They do enough. Like, even Pan Arms explode. But for the most part, you know, they can prep their specials. Like, see the sorcerers here? Nice, hit 80. But yeah, that's that's at least 10 minutes faster, and that was with TTF going nowhere near the same level as everything else. So, realistically, I think if we had stuck to CCC, I'd be willing to say it would probably have been about, about 12 or 13 minute time save instead of 10 minutes. So, it definitely seems like CCC is coming out on top with a slightly different comp. I definitely want to compare to, like, in terms of pure XP, I still think new mop up Operation 3 with like three forces or potentially two forces and two ridiculously demoned up uh, challenge mode weapons will probably outpace it. Since there's kind of like a, a ceiling with how hard you can push CCC where that ceiling doesn't really exist for Episode 4. Like, the more challenge mode weapons you have, the better you get, the faster the run goes. It's not like you're relying purely on Hell in Episode 4, where there's just nothing you can do after a certain point beyond V502. And accuracy ups. Like, genuinely, the more ATP you have, the faster the run goes, etc. Kind of interesting. Yeah, one more run, and I think everybody should level. It takes about a room to level point. We're gonna get a little bonus XP for the people on 78 right now. It just trims it from the next quest.
I can kill the Gaigui if they want when I go to set up another room. But I'm not gonna stick around for a miracle. I'll help these though. Again, that trims off the next quest, how many kills are needed. Uh, you can enjoy if you want, I'm gonna be out. Check and squeeze just a little more XP into the run. I think that was a good strat before. If whoever is hosting the game, especially if they're the power level the ID, that they could just leave early. The other team could get just another 1,000 while they wait. This reduces downtime in the quest, improves like real time uh, grinds. And at least they have Shifta and everything, so they should at least be able to hurt, like, Gaigui or Gibbles. They need to. Also, that reminds me. Oh. Put the other mag away by accident. I mean, I guess it just goes to show that sometimes you just need stacking a Bowie and you don't need to be max level. Oh, this further proof. I don't think it matters. I'm still getting the stack kills, which is all that matters. Oh well. Oh, I got paralyzed. Whatever. Okay, yeah, we'll swap our mag back. Yeah, I definitely think the person that has to host the game will end up falling behind because the other team will just get, like, naturally several thousand more XP per run attempted. So they'll naturally start to outpace. Let alone if it's, like, a ranger with hell, how much faster the XP is. We're seeing the level disparity a bit between, like, hell handgun versus, like, the hell needle stuff. Where we can see who is specifically probably hell shotting in the group, like, without a doubt. Welcome, TTV Pun. Hope you're doing well. Seems almost 80. So, probably by the end of the next room, I think they'll be very close. Assuming 79 is hit here. And we'll go grab our mag later. I do need that eventually, the real one. Sadly, nothing of interest dropped. Oh, not 79. 183 to level up. So close, yeah. Let's hope with a little bit of extra XP, you would have leveled there. Oh well. I'm using in a solo lobby, feeding mags for my ult. Nice, nice. Poor Del Saber. Yeah, like, funny enough there, the MST difference wasn't enough to... I, I still killed the Sorcerer with the same number of fireballs. That actually didn't even matter in the run at all. That's so sad. Poor Phonuman. If only your MST mattered more. Sir Roger says, Hey folks, new question here. What level should I fight D-Rolle for the first time? Uh, yeah, I think it depends on character and class. Twenty? No, get out of here. No, that makes no sense. 20, 20 are in hard mode. <laughs> Get out of here. Um, I think it matters more. Yeah, but if you're playing solo, you should.
you guys are just giving me the crazy advice. I feel like I'm being gaslit. Like, in PSO, 20, you go to hard mode. You should be doing it at, like, 12. I'm not saying you should grind it, but, like, when do it the first attempt? Level 20 is a very high level for first attempt. Yeah, 17 is more than enough. I'm like, you guys are in for a rude awakening for challenge mode if you if your default answer is 20. You're in for a very rude awakening there. Yeah, but even then, I'm mean, it's challenge mode. Challenge mode is very similar. Just recommend the challenge mode level. Right, and there, but you don't grind to 20 to learn it for the first time. That's crazy. I I thought you roll at like 13. <laughs> like, what are you guys doing? You should, 20 is way too high. That's like I can survive falls level of HP. Like that's that's a little crazy. I'm sorry. Yeah, challenge mode, you guys are like 10, yeah. Like, I'm willing to give like a little buffer and say like 12 or 13, just if you, if you really just don't want to party wipe on it. It mostly just comes down to like, I want to say early on, whether or not you get enough accuracy for things like a lock gun potentially to hit the faceplate if you want, or if you're able to wield the sword slash partisan. Like that that uh, I'm I'm hard checking that advice. That was crazy. You should not recommend new players to go to twenty. Yeah, you gotta you gotta put it in perspective. Like people have to learn. But like by that context, if you need to be twenty to do e roll a, you would have to be like thirty something for falls. Crazy. First time going through the game, so I'm trying to experience everything. Yeah, that's a good way to explore it. Like it's definitely a very different experience playing with. Uh, like low mag and you know fresh character no assists and I would say you know to some extent you know it will be harder potentially to be a Hugh cast in some regards without that little extra buff but at the same time it's kind of like you're playing like Shifta the whole time it's not it's not too bad but you'll find yourself kind of yearning for accuracy as you level Yeah, the hard part is probably figuring out where to stand for the laser patterns. Once you see the boss like a few times, you'll be like, oh, okay, you know, now I know when he's gonna beach. That's way too high, Murphy. That that's like that's like dreamland if they have to be level 20 to beat it. No way, that makes no sense. I mean, how much HP is a Hugh cast at level 20? Like, that, that number just blows me away. That is not okay. They have 196 health. That's crazy. <laughs> you can survive everything Falls does by, like, a long shot. Yeah, and you'll find you'll... Yeah, you'll find kind of like a weird paradox with the U-Cast. It's like other characters are very excited to get power on their mag. U-Cast is like, listen, even though it's a terrible stat, I want my ducks. I just need to be able to hit something. Then, then we're all good. Then we hit our equilibrium, we go towards our mag uh, recommended stat line. And it's like, okay, now I'll take some power. Yeah, like, it's always going to be easier if you pair up with somebody with buffs, because they potentially could debuff the boss. You have a lot of healing, which is usually the big concern with the cast, especially for newer players as you learn the boss pattern. Oh, is everybody 80? Everybody's 80. Congratulations. So it's like... Yeah. Some people got 82 at that same time frame. We saw what the difference was there. Right, so I'm going to slash lobby. Oops. Slash lobby fail.
let me put some items away. I have to get my real mag back. Don't need to worry about that. Okay, so when all is said and done, how do we do in terms of items? I probably won't play this character again later. I just want to see how many items I ended up with. Gotta put the right mag away this time. Let's see, from the week, we only got about 40 of each material. It was on the lower end. I, but to be fair, we also did, had vacation days last week. We were more inclined to do additional bonuses. I love that random ad slot I picked up on lower difficulty. Auto or something. Okay. We had a couple Jayas. So I think it's technically better than the one I was holding for new players because it has the ABs, which is preferable. Even though it has a decent native percentage, you're not really going to take advantage of that unless you really, really, really want those satellite lizards dead. Um, there's anything else we need here. I, I don't think I agree with those generalizations, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think people with partisans will do fine. It's more like, how quickly do people realize that popping the faceplate is useful? Because if you're playing normally, you won't really have a high level Rafoe on normal mode. But that can be kind of annoying. If you manage to get it, uh, potentially that does save a lot of time on it. It's it's more like RNG, whether I think the force has a good time on Worm Boss, which is a bit unfortunate. But unlike regular Fantasy Star, you could just skip the Worm Boss and go to Mines. And if you get the weapons from Mines, or the techniques from Mines, then uh, yeah, that bypasses a lot of the issues the forces have on normal difficulty. Because you have to put yourself in the shoes of a new player. It's really annoying to get all the techniques, because some of them don't drop until you're in harder areas. So, like, you're not going to see, like, a lot of the raw techniques prior to mines, for example. It's, it's going into the rare sighting kind of category. But fortunately, you can just skip it, so you don't even have to do the bosses. Yeah. Because normally, that, that I would say would be the normal hang-up for Force. Just like, ooh, you didn't get a good... Didn't get a high, decent-ish level Foey, like, four. And then all you have are zero AoE spells, and it's like, oh boy, attacking the faceplate time. <laughs> then, you, then you have to play the laser dodging minigame for a very long time, which is very annoying. Um, I guess we're done with the video. I don't really have too much else to add. We got to see different power leveling quests. We didn't test RT, but again, we've seen RT is about on par with TTF from ultimate experiences, I don't imagine it would be that much different between very hard mode and everything else. It still has the same annoying enemies that are not great for hunters, aka every boss flies, or is just out of reach. So, kind of kind of same complaints uh, when it comes to leveling, but I think we saw that CCC picked it up a bit with a slightly different comp. I was definitely more impressed, for sure, with CCC today than I was before, because, like, it being like 15 to 20 under expectations, XP per second was kind of brutal. But with the Force solving a lot of the problems we saw the first time in experimentation, I think that I think that was pretty quick. I think that was pretty, pr pretty quick. Because, I mean, we're ending at almost like three hours. Like, we're ending this time just to get our first character to 80. Not even the whole party was hitting it at like two hours 45 real time. So the fact that we got to that point and we were messing around... Like, we were swapping items for TTF, we did TTF. I mean, like, I, I think it's kind of a clear winner, I guess, in that sense. So I'm glad we got to experiment with it a bit. Yeah, it definitely was quicker than the other runs that went on last night. So, 
So that'll bring up my opinion of CCC a lot more. Before I thought it was like just a little under episode four. Now I think it's a little above episode four. Now that we play with the comp. But again, episode four, I think we'll take that lead if there's more forces. So I think they're a lot more equal, which is good, I guess, for the health of the game. And that's all I have to really say in terms of additional commentary on the power leveling. Anyway, hope everybody enjoyed power leveling, but it's time to say goodbye to YouTube. So if you did watch to this point in the video or the bot, I'd just like to say thank you for watching, and see you again in the next part.